We're here today to launch our July bi-monthly report looking at trends and transactions in the Irish commercial property market in the first six months of 2016. We'll also share some initial thoughts on the potential implications of last week's surprise Brexit vote and what implications this will have for the Irish commercial real estate market specifically. While Britain voting to leave the European Union in the June referendum was always a distinct possibility, the Brexit result took the commercial real estate world by surprise. Needless to say, anything that creates uncertainty is unwelcome in the property market, and to say that the Brexit vote has created uncertainty is clearly an understatement. However, it will be some time before there's clarity on how the Irish economy, and in turn the real estate sector, will be affected by this unexpected development. We will strive to monitor the situation as best we can and keep our client base informed of developments both positive and negative over the coming months. So to the office market, there has been continued activity in this sector over recent months with a healthy volume of transactional activity recorded in quarter two. The volume of office take up in the quarter at over 40,000 square metres is not representative of underlying activity however because there are several sizable transactions currently in negotiations and due to sign over the coming months which will only really manifest as take up in the second half of the year. Potential office occupiers are obtaining better terms for refurbished office accommodation as opposed to new buildings in the current climate, which is easing rental pressures to some degree. Indeed, while prime headline rental values of €638 Euro per square metre or €60 Euro per square foot are now being quoted for a number of buildings in the central business district in Dublin, there is as yet no firm evidence of this rental being achieved and as a result we've left our prime rent series unchanged at 619 euro per square meter or 57 euro 50 per square foot at the mid-year point. This stabilization in prime rental rates comes after exceptional recovery in rents over the last two years. Although prime rents appear to have stabilized at current levels for now, we do expect to see some upward pressure in the autumn as new transactional evidence emerges. We also expect to see the gap between prime and secondary rent starting to narrow over the next six months. Office transactions agreed recently include the pre-letting of over 15,000 square metres to Amazon at the Vertium building which is under construction on Burlington Road in Dublin 4 and the pre-letting of almost 8,000 square metres to the National Treasury Management Agency at Ballymore's Project Wave in the North Docklands. There has been steady progress over the last couple of months on many of the new office developments and refurbishment projects that are all at various stages of completion in the city centre. The speed at which these new schemes let up and the lease terms that they will achieve will ultimately dictate the pace at which other schemes will obtain funding and indeed commence on site. At this stage it appears that several schemes that originally had completion dates target of 2018 will now not be completed until 2019 or beyond. In recent months planning has been lodged to develop 6,290 square metres of office accommodation at IPC House in Shelburne Road. Plans have been lodged to demolish the existing headquarters of the Department of Health, Hawkins House and nearby Apollo House in Dublin City Centre and replace them with a modern plaza development in due course. Meanwhile, Hibernia Reit recently received full planning permission for phase two of the redevelopment of Harcourt Square in Dublin City Centre, providing for a total redevelopment of over 25,000 square metres in due course. One of the only positive outcomes for the Irish commercial property market from the unexpected Brexit referendum result on June 24th is an increase in demand for Dublin office properties in the medium to long term if some occupiers potentially relocate from London to alternative euro denominated capital. If this materialises in due course, Dublin will need to have a ready supply of modern office stock, but more importantly, residential accommodation to cater for this increased appetite. Moving to the industrial market, we have seen consistent activity in this sector over recent months with several large requirements active at present. Industrial take-up during quarter two and indeed during the first half of the year has been somewhat lower than the level of activity recorded last year, however. This is reflective of a severe scarcity of modern industrial accommodation in core locations as opposed to a weakening in demand levels, however. With prime industrial rents continuing to edge upwards, the viability of new industrial and logistics development will ultimately improve. 
Prime headline rents in Dublin are now in the order of €85 Euro per square metre and are firmly on target to reach our forecast of €94 Euro per square metre during the second half of 2016. As a result of increased rents, we expect to see some speculative development activity occurring within the next few quarters, which will in turn begin to alleviate supply pressures. In the meantime, many occupiers will have no option but continue to pursue design and build solutions in order to satisfy their requirements. There has been a notable improvement in demand for good industrial sites in the first half of 2016. There are a number of active requirements for industrial land and this is likely to continue in the second half of the year. The most notable industrial site sale concluded recently is the sale of approximately 120 acres at Pierstown in County Meath. There's been continued activity in the data centre sector in recent months also, with Microsoft having recently obtained planning to develop four new data centres at Grange Castle in West Dublin, where Google recently opened a second data centre facility. Meanwhile, Planning was recently granted for ePark Tech Campus, a new 25,000 square metre data centre campus on 32 acres at Little Island in Cork. Supply shortages are expected to continue to prevail in the industrial sector for the foreseeable future. We therefore expect to see further tightening in tenant inducements in leases over the course of the coming months, with landlords now firmly in control in this sector until such time as new supply starts to materialise. We also expect to see an increase in pre-letting negotiations as occupiers vie to acquire new facilities developed on a design and build basis. Appetite for good industrial investment opportunities remains strong, although supply is still very much constrained, particularly for large lot sizes. It remains to be seen what specific impacts Brexit will have for this sector of the property market in the long term. However, any deterioration in the domestic economy may negatively affect occupier demand. In addition, occupiers who are net exporters to the UK and potentially exposed to fluctuations in sterling are unlikely to make large-scale expansion or relocation decisions in the short term until the landscape is somewhat clearer. Take-up in the retail sector of the property market has remained healthy in the last few months, albeit considerably restrained by a shortage of opportunities in some of the better shopping centres, high streets and retail schemes around the country. Retailers are reporting severe shortages of good quality accommodation in certain schemes and certain locations. It's frustrating their rollout and expansion plans in the Irish market and in turn fueling rental growth as competition for the best pitches escalates. Encouragingly, the recovery in the Irish retail sector is very broad based with all of the 13 sectors analysed for the purpose of retail sales performance by the CSO now showing year on year improvements. This is also reflected in the appetite for retail accommodation, with demand emanating from many different types of retailers, with particularly strong demand from service-based retailers and food and beverage providers. News that John Lewis has agreed a partnership deal with Dublin city centre department store Arnott's, which will see the brand trading in the Irish market for the first time, has been broadly welcomed. One area that has experienced a notable increase in demand of late is the retail park market around the country, although much of this activity is emanating from a relatively small pool of retailers, many of which are involved in the furniture and household business. We have seen some upward movement in rents in various retail park schemes over recent months, albeit from a low base, and we do expect this trend to continue during the second half of 2016 although rental levels are still below their, their previous peak in 2007. With the exception of a large extension currently underway at Liffey Valley Shopping Centre in West Dublin, we haven't yet seen significant evidence of new retail development in this cycle. There has been an increase, however, in the number of planning applications for retail schemes of late, albeit most of these relate to refurbishment and refitting works as opposed to new development. The ILAC Shopping Centre in Dublin 1 was recent re recently granted planning for the redevelopment of Moore Mall. Plans were also recently approved for a large extension to the Crescent Shopping Centre in Limerick, while plans have been lodged recently for the refurbishment of the Royal Hibernian Way in Dublin City Centre. Until the end of June, the only obstacle to higher volumes of activity in the retail sector of the Irish property market in the second half of 2016 was a shortage of prime units in the locations that re retailers were specifically targeting. 
However, Britain's vote to leave the European Union has the potential to lower Irish GDP expectations and ultimately dent consumer confidence to some degree. Over the long term, the potential implementation of tariffs on goods being imported into Ireland from the UK would undoubtedly create a significant administrative, not to mention financial burden on retailers and impact on their bottom line and competitive position. Of more immediate concern, however, is the potential leakage of shoppers from the Republic into Northern Ireland and a potential reduction in UK tourists spurred by currency movements in the aftermath of the Brexit vote. Moving to the Irish investment market, the Irish commercial property market is clearly on course to outperform most, if not all, other European countries again this year. However, total returns from Irish commercial real estate in 2016 are expected to be somewhat lower than the record returns achieved in the last two-year period. Buoyed by a number of recent large transactions, including the acquisition of Blanchardstown Town Centre for £950 million, and the PwC headquarter office building in Dublin Docklands for £242 million. Investment spend in quarter two 2016 has been impressive. Total spend in the first half of the year is now comfortably in excess of €2 billion. Euro. However, as had been expected, much of the stock that is now being formally released for sale, or indeed due to be launched for sale in the autumn, is in comparatively small lots. Much of the activity in the market at the moment is occurring off-market, and this is expected to be a continuing to be a trend going forward. Even before the Brexit vote was announced on June 24th, annual investment spend for 2016 was expected to be somewhat less than that recorded in the Irish market during 2014 and 15, when deleveraging was really at its peak. However, the unexpected result last week has created uncertainty that may now delay some investment decisions in the short term until a clearer picture emerges as to the potential implications of Brexit on transaction volumes and indeed values. Transactions announced in recent weeks have included the sale of the Chase office building in Sandyford in Dublin 18 for 62.5 million, a multi-family residential block at Elm Park in Dublin 4 for 59 million, the Alliance office building in Elm Park in Dublin 4, which sold off market for more than 56 million. With global uncertainty becoming more pronounced, investors are under understandably focusing more attention on prime assets in the current climate, with the appetite for secondary product becoming noticeably thinner since the beginning of the year. This is partly attributable to the fact that the cost of funding for secondary assets is considerably more expensive than for core assets in the current climate. As we get deeper into the rental cycle, this may result in a softening in yields for secondary and provincial assets. However, there's no evidence of this as yet, and we have left our yields stable across all occupier sectors at the mid-year point. Investors are now primarily focused on income generation, and this is true of both the private and institutional buyers that remain active in the Irish market. Moving to the development land market, there's been a number of welcome announcements in recent weeks which ultimately will benefit the development sector and have the potential to stimulate much needed activity in this sector of the economy and indeed boost demand for development land. These include the appointment of a dedicated Minister for Housing in the new government, the publication of the recommendations of the government's housing committee that will feed into the publication of a new housing strategy later this summer, the announcement of a new local infrastructure housing fund which will help the viability of development, some relaxation of height restrictions in Dublin city centre which are welcome, and the publication of development plans in some local authority areas. There's been quite a bit of activity in the development land market over recent months, with 23 land sales totalling almost 130 million signed in quarter two, bringing total spend in the first half of the year to 489 million in 53 individual sales, comparing with 54 sales totalling 276 million in the same period last year. However, most of the land being traded is in relatively small lot sizes and we expect that this will continue in the second half of the year. Sites that have sold or gone sale agreed in recent months include a six acre development site at Spencer Dock in Dublin Docklands for 43 million euros, a 4.27 acre office site in Sandyford in the south suburbs for 10 million. 
Meanwhile, it has been reported that a preferred bidder has now been identified for the treasure collection of three land banks in Cork, which had been guiding between 25 and 30 million euros. We expect to see an escalation in demand for good housing sites in the second half of 2016 as the government unveiled their housing strategy and as we finally get some clarity from the central bank following their review of the controversial mortgage affordability rules. We also expect to see some, see some increased appetite for alternative uses including student accommodation and indeed nursing homes, both of which are defensive sectors in this post-Brexit referendum universe. With new development plans coming into force, the viability of developing purpose-built multifamily or PRS schemes will undoubtedly improve as the year progresses. Until there is clarity on the ramifications of the Brexit vote, developers are, however, expected to proceed with caution. If Ireland experiences increased appetite from office occupiers looking to relocate to Dublin over the medium term as anticipated, there will clearly be a need to ensure that we have sufficient office and residential accommodation to satisfy these requirements, which does bode well for the development sector of the market. The hotel and licensed market has had a busy few months. We've seen transactional activity continue at pace in the hotel sector and according to our research, a total of 15 hotel properties have changed hands in the last three month period, bringing the total number of hotel sales in the first half of the year to 29, totaling more than 136 million between them. This is a considerably higher volume of H1 spend than had been anticipated, particularly when you consider that it excludes some of the larger transactions that have been dominating the headlines in the last few months, including the four-star Gresham Hotel in Dublin City Centre, the Doubletree Hotel in Dublin 4, and the Lyrath Estate in Kilkenny, all of which are now at advanced bidder stage but haven't yet concluded and are not included in, in numbers. The H1 spend also excludes many hotels that have changed hands earlier this year as part of recent loan sales, including projects Ruby and Emerald, which were acquired by Oak Tree and Seor in recent weeks. We believe that there's up to 500 million euros of hotel transactions currently in negotiations, which suggests that annual transaction volumes will match, if not exceed, last year's record. The depth of buyers and the strong pricing achieved for hotels that have traded in recent months is now encouraging other willing sellers to bring their properties to the market, with many of the prices that were guided for hotel assets in the first half of the year comfortably exceeded. We expect to see more hotel properties being launched for sale around the country over the course of the coming months to satisfy buyer appetite. The value of hotel properties continues to benefit from improved trading on the back of strong tourist activity, with tourist numbers in the first quarter of 2016 up almost 16% year on year, helped in no small part by favourable currency movements. Against this backdrop, the drop in the value of sterling following the surprise Brexit vote has the potential to have severe repercussions for the hotel and tourism sector in Ireland, when you consider that over 40% of tourist activity in Ireland each year is typically generated from visitors from the UK and Northern Ireland. Transactions agreed recently include the sale of the Pillow Hotel in Ashburn in County Meath for more than 11 million euros, the Hilton Hotel at Dublin Airport for in excess of 10 million euros, and the sale of Tulfaris Hotel in Blessington in County Wicklow for more than 8 million euros. A number of hotel properties have recently been offered for sale, including the Farnham Estate in County Cavan, which is guiding in the region of 26 million, and the specialist wedding venue, Leakslip Manor and Gardens, which is guiding in the order of 2.3 million. Over the last few years, there has been frustration at the shortage of hotel accommodation in Dublin. This was reiterated recently in the new Fulch Ireland report, which warned that Dublin faces a severe shortage of hotel accommodation over the next two year period. According to our research, there's potential for the delivery of up to 9,000 additional hotel rooms in Dublin if all of the schemes that are in the planning process at present are delivered. Against this backdrop, we expect to see a number of sites that now have the benefit of planning permission for hotel projects to be offered for sale over the coming months. While a number of Dublin pubs have recently been launched for sale, the stock of properties coming to the market in the first half of the year was somewhat less than had been anticipated. 
This is expected to change in the second half of the year as many licensed premises that traded as part of loan portfolios over the last number of years are brought to the market. Demand for well-located pub premises remains strong with increased evidence of appetite for pubs in suburban as well as city centre locations over recent months. The trading performance has improved considerably and has undoubtedly been boosted in recent weeks by good weather and the Euro 2016 tournament. In summary, the Irish commercial property market has performed well in the first half of 2016, but we expect that the next couple of months will be quite uncertain as each sector of the market considers how last week's unexpected Brexit result impacts on their sector specifically in the short, medium and long term.